for the invitation to talk to this esteemed group of chairs over here. What a captive audience uh, and the most important role and responsibility that you have in terms of developing uh, both future employees, but more importantly, future leaders uh, for corporate America as well as for our country. So you have a very, very important role to play. I also have a personal bias uh, or a selfish bias having uh, two teenage boys, one who is studying mathematics and biology but interested in genetics and statistics, and what I see from that generation, what they need to do to compete and what corporations need. So I'm going to talk about that too, but we'll kind of uh, put in a plug that yes, while we are talking about graduate studies, I do want to say offering more than one AP stats class in high school is absolutely, absolutely necessary and important. Uh, my only condition to both of them was before you finish your uh, um, uh, high school, make sure you take your AP stats. They took it in their sophomore year. They got very excited. There was nothing else then to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, mathematics, calc, BC, um, multi, finite math, great. And then we lose them. We lose them to ComSci, we lose them to bioinformatics. You have business schools coming up with informatics and all that stuff, much more sexy or much more made things. We really need to capture it when they're coming out of high school. So just wanted to put that plug in uh, because you guys can influence so broadly. Um, I have 15 minutes, as I was told, uh, so I'm going to stick to my 15 minutes so that we can kind of have the interaction. And what I'm going to do is share a little bit about what different roles I have done, not to talk about myself, but to kind of say that what I'm sharing with you comes from that perspective. Okay, uh, having been in industry for 22 years, all 22 years with Eli Lilly, I started off as a senior statistician, as a research scientist uh, in clinical development, doing phase two, phase three drug development, then spent five years in commercial in phase four drug development. I've done assignments both in the US and abroad, um, and a couple of them that I'll talk, uh, so variety of uh, variety of roles within drug development, but more Im importantly, the two or three specific ones were, uh, as the vice president for biometrics, I had the functional responsibilities for three global functions, global statistical sciences, data management, which we call data sciences and solutions, and scientific communication. So if you think about design, analysis, and interpretation, and disclosure of our data and information. Uh, for pharma, uh, information is our intellectual property. And I kind of tell my status group that, you know, we are in the business of converting data to information, information to knowledge. Uh, that is what's very, very important. Uh, so I've done a line role, and as a result of that, I've seen a portfolio through a functional lens. That's the book, and all the way from discovery, research, early phase clinical development, late phase clinical development, commercial, manufacturing, the entire line from that. Um, so I've done that, and then uh, three years ago, I was tapped to do a business role as a global brand development leader. So my bookends changed where I was responsible for uh, development of a molecule and bringing that to the marketplace, but um, through, saw the bookends through a different lens. Doesn't matter whether it's legal issue, business development, clinical trial, supply chain, data management, statistics. I was responsible for whatever it took to bring that molecule to a marketplace. Very different, but it comes back to why uh, and what you need to do uh, to be successful in those roles. And we uh, successfully not only uh, brought a molecule um, from a submission perspective, but launched it uh, recently. And then very, very recently, as of July 1, uh, uh, which was completely from the left field, uh, several months ago I was tapped to ask to say, can you lead uh, uh, the IT organization at Eli Lilly and be the CIO? So this is my newest title as of July 1. Uh, Ron, thanks uh, for, <laughs> it means you put it on ASM website, it's like, oh my god, I was inundated with emails, but thank you for that. Uh, but I think it's the first time a statistician probably has been asked. I don't know if there are other CIOs uh, with stats background. So the reason I'm sharing this is just that I'm, what I'm going to share my views, not necessarily like Lily's views, but my thoughts and views, because we do hire a lot, a lot of statisticians, both PhDs and masters. Uh, very, very critical to drug development, very, very important. Um, and within that stint, uh, also, uh, I was responsible for only global statistical sciences, but also to develop advanced analytics capabilities for Lilly Research Labs, very important in terms of you know, if you're going to be hiring these many PhDs, you know, from a company corporation perspective, how are you going to exploit this firepower that you have uh, from an analytics perspective? 
Um, so how do we, where do our statisticians work within farm or within uh, at Eli Lilly? So I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking the different roles that they play. And then the question that was asked of me is, what do you see in terms of the needs, especially in terms of what are the other skills that are, that are needed? Okay, so I'm going to talk about that. Uh, so going back into research, so we have statisticians who work with our scientists, uh, the chemists, the biologists, right, all the way in discovery in terms of what protein structures, you know, what are chemical structures that show the potential to become good candidates, good molecules. So in candidate selection, very, very important because they are looking at literally tens and thousands of different structures <coughs> and working with the chemist over there, how do you do that? With this whole explosion in the omics world, I'll call it, whether it's uh, proteomics or chemomics, put whatever omics you want. There's another full area of where the statisticians work with the bioinformaticist, the biologist, again to say, as we get into personalized medicine, into tailored therapeutics, what, what are those features and how do we kind of uh, pr predict them and things like that. I'm giving you a very 30,000 high view because okay, in 15 minutes I can't cover each and every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to clinical development of bulk, a majority of our statisticians <coughs> absolutely are in clinical development and they are critical foundational. I think Lily probably is pioneering uh, how we leverage uh, uh, statistical and uh, statisticians in that because it's not just about design of a clinical trial and you know this whole era of give me the sample size and yes run your tables figures and listings and give me the p-values of here is the data analyze it and tell me what it is but it's actually up front when you are developing the entire uh, program development program uh, because it takes in today's day almost close to a billion dollar b billion dollars to bring a molecule to the marketplace okay Majority of that, when you are in phase two, phase three drug development, that is significant expense over there. And how you design your clinical trial, right? Sample size is directly proportional to the cost. It means there are other aspects of it, but that is a key aspect. But what can you do from a modeling and simulation perspective? What can you do to say, what's not just your type one, type two error and all that stuff, but what's the probability of study success? What's the probability of your overall uh, program success? How do you do portfolio optimization? So it's amazing as to today, from a virtual perspective, what can you do through modeling and simulation and bring in all the different methods that come into play. So clinical development where it's a big bulk in terms of investments that companies pharma makes uh, from a research perspective, right? When you look at all the industries, uh, pharma is one where uh, they make significant investments in research as a total of your total sales means uh, that's, uh, that goes in. So, Statisticians play a critical leadership role in terms of that clinical development. Then I see a very growing need as we get into commercialization and this whole field of business commercial analytics that is coming in. With technology advances, with the digitization that's going on and this era of big data, it's very easy when you look at retail, banking, all that stuff, what's happening, right? Same thing is happening when you look at commercial, the marketing spend, uh, how scripts are written, all that stuff. There's so many desperate databases that we can look at, claims databases and things like that. Um, and this whole field of business analytics and we are statisticians are working with our commercial folks um, in doing business analytics. Manufacturing, yes, absolutely very, very important and many more. So. Uh, a broad range of where statisticians work within pharma, within Lilly. From my perspective, having sat in different uh, leadership uh, roles or responsibilities and say, what do I see, what's most needed? So it's given that they will come in with deep technical expertise, given, okay? That yes, from a statistical methods perspective, design perspective, that deep understanding of methods, computational things that go with it that has to be a given that they come with it. In addition to that, what is important? Uh, and there could be a myriad of things that I can go through, but I'm going to kind of say two or three most important stuff. Not rocket science and first and foremost, I'm going to talk about communication. Communication, communication, communication. Statisticians are, so I'm, I'm going to be very candid and blunt also because this is where you have asked me, give me your honest opinion. 
we so and I'll talk about it because we have put a development program at Lilly just to get raise the floor of all of these skill sets that are so very important for them to lead in a certain way. And I know Ron has, uh, we, have, we have talked with the ASF about that, and actually the whole development program was even in uh, our Amstead News. First time, I think, for an industry to say, wow, why are we putting this investment? Because I believe very, very, very important with communication, both written and verbal. We can get so much into the details. Your business partner doesn't care what method you use, what it is. Your ability to understand the business that you're supporting, talk in that non-statistical fashion and absolutely be able to influence to say why is it important to kind of do certain things a certain way and then both in terms in design analysis as well as when you're communicating the results. But I can't emphasize means from a communication perspective, how do we get savvy enough just like the business people are in terms of that uh, communication skills, okay? The second piece I'm going to talk about is, um, it's I'll, I'll call it business acumen. Uh, and that's also for business acumen, business savviness. Um, working for a for-profit organization, right? At the end of the day, what we do is we impact, we want to bring innovative medicines to for patients, that patients that we seek to serve. You need to understand the product perspective. You need to understand what is the overall return on investment of certain things. But the business savviness uh, needs to be there. Uh, the third piece is about the curiosity. The curiosity, understanding, you know, when you look at uh, some of the skills from a leadership perspective, we'll talk, we can talk about it, you know, where is negotiation fits in, where influence fits in, because you're constantly, you know, I ask people, are you in sales, and nobody will raise their hand, and I say, I submit to each and every one of us that we are in sales. Uh, without selling our idea, our proposal, uh, <coughs> that nothing happens. So those are, you may have, the, you may be the finest, finest mathematician or statistician, you may be the Nobel Prize winner, whatever it is, okay? I have deep technical expertise, but if you cannot convince as to why this is the right way to do things, or this is what it is, it doesn't matter. So very, very important from that perspective um, as to how do we kind of get them to have that curiosity, uh, problem solving, you know, that strategic thinking, how do you do that? As you are putting your programs together, what are we doing to encourage both undergraduate and graduate students to go pro? Innovation is going to happen at the cross sections of different disciplines. And how do we make them more pro? So my son, who is 20, he's second year of college, going into third year. College, my, if I have any chance to speak to uh, high school kids as they go into undergraduate, it's like, go pro, guys. Yes, you need your deep, technical skills. Um, no matter what field you're going in, do analytics, no question. No matter what field, you go into business, fine, but make sure you take some of your analytics course because from decision making, managers, uh, leaders, management folks, having to make good, sound, quantitative decision making is extremely important. Uh, so no matter what field you are in, having those analytics uh, courses is important. But if you want to pursue a deep uh, uh, emphasis in statistics, uh, which my, one of my, my, my older son is interested, double major if it's in healthcare, statistics, mathematics, and biology. These kids can do it. In addition, many of your universities have very good business schools. So at IU, through Kelly School of Business, they pro they they even uh, give a certification in management. So can you do that? You know, means encourage your students to leverage. The other programs that are there, I was just talking to, I, I forgot the name, but the, our chair from UCSD, and you know, I was thrilled to hear as to the intersection between <coughs> comp sci, informatics, and statistics that they're developing. How do you can, how you can link into your management schools so when our students are coming out, they're well-rounded and they can compete. They can not, let's go away from serving, enabling the business to how can we lead? Right? Um, uh, what should that strategic intent be, and how can we lead in the design, interpretation, analysis of data, and go from there? Okay. So that's. I hope I've been within my 15 minutes. Okay. I'll be there. Yes. Uh, so the high-level thoughts on what I believe what the future entails. Future for the statistical need. I mean, somebody asked that question. Oh my God! Uh, in all these years, um, my one dream once was: Can I? once be over my head come because we have never been able to recruit enough. The demand is so much out there and I only see the demand going way out out there as more and more businesses see the need for analytics. 
um, and how do we bring in more analytical-minded uh, uh, employees? 